everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're talking about one of my favorite features in Photoshop, it's curves. I feel like I do a Photoshop tutorial on curves every year or two, something like that, but it's such a, just a good, powerful feature. You've got to know about this feature. Um, before we jump into the tutorial, graphicstock.com is our sponsor this month, April of 2016, and it's Graphic Stock's Creative Rewards Month. So typically it's $49 per month to sign up for graphicstock.com and get access to their amazing stock photography library. But if you sign up this month and you're a new uh, member, it's $39 for an entire six months, um, and you get access to the entire library with no limits on the amount of downloads, photos, illustrations, vectors. They got a a lot of stuff here. Um, so if you're looking for an image of you and your classmates or you and your, your uh, students looking for Uzbekistan on a globe, look at that. Perfect photo for that job. There's a link in the description of uh, this video. So let's talk about curves here. What are curves? Well, if you go up to images, adjustments, curves, curves are a great way to adjust the light and tone in specific parts of your image. So I've just opened up curves and it's under image adjustments, curves. Here in the curves dialog box, when we use curves this way, we're applying curves directly to the image. So if I drag this up, it's going to make my image very bright. I hit OK. I've affected the pixels of my image, and that's not a very good thing. We should be using curves as an adjustment layer. Layer, new adjustment layer, curves. You can see we give it a name, OK, and here we go. We've got our curves uh, dialog box. But this isn't quite the same as the other curves dialog box. So we'll come back to curves adjustment layers in a moment. Let's go image adjustments curves, but no, this isn't really the great way to use curves, not the best way to use curves. We have a bunch of presets. I almost, I've, I've maybe used them two or three times. It's better to know how to use curves so you can do it your own way. If you pull down, well, if you click anywhere on this line, it applies a point. If you pull down on that point, it darkens your image. If you pull up on the point, it adds light to the image. Now, I've just done pretty extreme pulls. Um, so you can see we got extreme results. One of the things you want to avoid when you're working with curves is anytime you have a flat spot in the image, because where you have a flat spot, you are, you will lose all contrast. You get these big blocks of gray. You also want to avoid downhill runs. Downhill runs mean that part of the image has been converted to a digital negative. Um, and you can see it just looks really pretty crappy. Hold down the alter option key and the, uh, the cancel button reverts to or changes to a reset button, which brings us back to normal. Great. Uh, we have some options in here as far as drawing our own curve. Uh, let's talk about how, like, what what this grid is and, and how we can make sense of this. You can see there's a histogram that appears behind the curve line, and we can turn that on or off. I recommend you keep it on. The way a histogram works is over here are the darkest pixels in the image. Over here are the brightest pixels of the image. In the middle, well, that's like the midtones, and then darker than midtones, brighter than midtones. So if we want to make the darker parts of the image darker, we add a point down here and drag down on the image a little bit. And if we want to make the brighter parts of the image more bright, add a point up here and drag up a little bit. You can see that this essentially increases the contrast of your image. And sure enough, if I just reset this and I go to like an increase contrast RGB curve, it's going to give me an S curve. Now this is a pretty drastic S curve and you can see it really pumps in contrast. But just think of it in terms of an S-curve is always going to increase the contrast in your image. To get rid of any point, as I just tried to do there, you can just click and drag one of the, these points off, just completely off the Curves dialog box. That's great. Uh, we are going to increase the contrast here a little bit by just dragging down and making the darker parts of this image um, quite a bit darker. There we go. And maybe we'll just add a little bump to the brights. We don't want to make the brights too much brighter. Maybe just something like that. And we've really increased the contrast of our image. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to apply that curves adjustment. Now we've got, you know, contrast jumping out of this image. Let's go back to the curves dialog so we can continue talking about, you know, what all this stuff is. You also have this pencil, and the little pencil icon is going to allow you to, let's say you want to draw the S curve yourself. You can do that. And you can see it's really given us this extreme contrast now. You can hit the smooth button, and that's going to just smooth out your drawing, right? Move it incrementally back closer to that baseline line going through the middle. I'm going to hold my Alter Option key and just reset. If you switch to pigment, um, a lot of people in print are just more used to being able to pull down, and that's your brightness, and pull up, and that's darkness. That's kind of all it really is. 
I'm used to using light, so I know that when I pull down, it's going to get darker, and when I pull up, it's going to get brighter. Uh, you can change your grid size, all that kind of easy stuff. You have these three eyedroppers. This eyedropper, it sets a white point, so if I make this greenery white, it's going to literally make it white, and therefore blow out the rest of my image and change the color pretty drastically. I'm going to undo that. Commander Control Z. Same thing with the dark point. If I click here, it makes that point black, and it's going to make stuff pretty dark, and you can see it introduced all kinds of different colors. I'm going to undo that. The gray point Point. When you use this, you would select an area of the photo that you know or at least believe should have no color in it. And when you select that, Curves will do its best to work with that point, make that point solid gray and, and then devoid of all color, and therefore white balancing the entirety of the rest of the image. So that's like a quick way to just white balance uh, in theory. It doesn't always work great. Um, especially if you don't know if that point in your image was supposed to be gray, but that's the value of gray cards. If you're a photographer, you might be familiar with a gray card, and that's you know this is how you use it in Photoshop. We also have the finger, uh, and this allows us to very intuitively use curves. We could say like, all right, Photoshop, up here, I know that needs to be brighter, but like her skin definitely needs to be darker. All right, but whoa, that looks kind of just funky, right? Let's just adjust this, smooth this out a little bit. Over here, this might need to be a little bit darker. Um, and this dark part definitely needs to be quite a bit darker, right? So you can just go through an image that way and just move up and down. That's all you're doing is clicking on your image out here, and it's going to correspond on your curve line right in here. We're just going to cancel this, and we're going to go look at the curves adjustment layer. So we're going to go image adjustments curves. And, oh, I'm sorry. What am I thinking? Layer. New adjustment layer curves. There we go. See, I already got locked into a new way of going about this. I'm going to lock my uh, curves properties panel over here. And you can see it's the same exact curves adjustment that we were just using. We've got the finger, we got the eyedroppers, we got everything. We also have color channels. Now, color channels are really useful because you can go in and you can infuse more or less of a color into your photo. Now, what's interesting about the color channels is you have red, green, blue, RGB. The opposite of red, green, and blue correspond with CMYK. I mean, the K in CMYK is black, but CMY. So the opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta. The opposite of blue is yellow. So with the red, let's say we look at it and we say, you know what? The highlights need more red. That means I would add a point up here and drag up. That's going to infuse my highlights with red, all right? But the shadows need more cyan. That means I pull down on this and the shadowy areas of the trees behind her end up getting more of that greenish blue cyan, all right? That's pretty cool. We can go to green. We can say, look, I want my shadows to have this magenta tint to them, but I want my highlights to have that green tint to them, getting a little bit of that retro look, right? That's kind of cool. And then with blue, we can say, uh, let's infuse more blue into the shadows, right? So blue when you drag up, but yellow if you drag down. So I'm going to infuse some blue into my shadows, but I want yellow in my highlights, and we get this sort of creamy retro look, right? It's a lomography effect. We do it using curves. It's very, very simple. Um, so that's really, really interesting and good to know. Now, one of the other things I want to leave you with here with um, your curves is if you go back to the RGB composite mode here, you can actually drag just the two points that are there, the white point. If you drag the white point this this way, it's going to really intensify your whites. I mean, it's just going to take the whites and crank them up, 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 up. From here all the way to the far right, all of that part of your image on the histogram, all those colors and tones are really just the levels of light, really. All of that stuff is now solid white. So that's very destructive to do that. You can drag the black point in this way, and it does the same thing. All the stuff to the left of this point, all solid black. We don't want to do that. What we can do, and what is interesting to do, is reduce the amount of white. Sometimes it, we need to fade our image and give it this kind of retro fade effect. And the same thing can be done with the blacks. You can infuse whites right into, or you infuse light, I should say, right into the very blacks of your image and, you know, fade the entire image with this very, like, Instagram retro faded look. And you do it by raising the black point and reducing the white point. In fact, you don't even really have to reduce the white point if you don't want. Just raising the black point um, can do a lot of interesting things to photos. And it's a really, really effective way to kill off contrast in your images. So I'm going to actually drag the white point down just a little bit. And then even within this, if you want to increase the contrast, just drag a nice little S-curve 
and in the pixels that are in between your whites and your blacks, the contrast will still be further increased a little bit more. So you can build very complex curves with the curves adjustment. There's so much you can do with curves. It's so useful. You can create and correct entire color shifts in an image. You can tone images. You can do dodging and burning if you include masks and work with masks. There's just so much you can do with curves. It's ridiculous. Uh, but I hope this has given you just a, a an, an intro understanding of some of the great things you can do with curves and why you should be interested in curves and maybe the power of curves. So for curves in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.